right, let's start with death metal number seven. What did you, uh... <laughs> what were your thoughts on death metal? Good, okay. So, you know, th there there is a... There is a discussion among comic book fans whether or not repetition is a good or a bad thing. Um, to those who say that repeating the same ending over and over again is good, I'm sorry, but you are brain dead and your opinion is wrong. <laughs> because Snyder literally took the same fucking ending from Metal and, like, copy-pasted it into uh, Death Metal. Not even just Metal. Convergence. Yeah, Convergence 2.0. Hey, hey, guys. Hey guys, look, it's just like Convergence, like, everything's, everything is, everything exists. We're, we're back to, okay, okay, we're so back to Infinite make, Earths again. We're back to Infinite to make, Multiverses to make again. Sure that ever, to make sure that everyone here understands, we are going to go into a lot of spoilers. In fact, we're just going to spoil the whole issue. We're gonna going to spoil, forward, we'll spoil, so. we'll spoil everything we're talking about. <laughs> uh, we, we don't care. Um, <laughs> so I think it's important to note that Greg Capullo was fucking carrying Scott Snyder this entire time on his back. Like, I I'm, I'm, don't know why Greg Capullo hasn't gotten, like, some kind of back medication for fucking carrying Scott Snyder in his god-awful scripts. <laughs> and you can tell you, you can tell that, like, the back pain's starting because it's not his best work. Like, there's that, there's that page of the Teen Titans when uh, Batkeck throws them in the air and... Garfield's sideburns make him look like a fucking 40-year-old man. <laughs> and and I want to point out, this is all just, like, one big extended fight scene. It's literally the end of Avengers Endgame, when, like, all the heroes are together, and, like, it's just one massive 40-minute fight scene. Th this is that, but in comic book form. That makes it utterly obnoxious. Yeah, pretty much. And I, I love that the fact, like, Every like the whole like marketing for death metal was like this is going to be a Wonder Woman focused story, except for a huge chunk of the middle of the story. <laughs> yeah, where it becomes like oddly focused on Batman, Superman, and the Flash. Yeah, it's just it's just like the first two issues like uh, Wonder Woman focus, and then the last two issues Wonder Woman focus. The entirety of the middle, and then also the tie-ins have nothing to do with, like, this is like, a even, Wonder Woman e story. Even the, even the last days, that was it the last days of the multiverse one shot, where, like, all the heroes were hanging out and doing, like, what they wanted to do before the end of the world or something? I think it was that one. Yeah. Even, even that one was pulling itself in constantly different directions. There was no, uh... Like, if they really wanted to focus on Wonder Woman, they did an absolutely shit job. <laughs> yeah. And then, like, even even in this issue, they spend, like, multiple different splash pages diverting away from the fight between Diana and Batkeck to focus on, uh, like, the, the Bat family, the Super family, and, like, the... Everyone except her, uh, everyone except Wonder Woman and the Wonder Woman family, and the, and the Flashes. Also, there, there's a there's a page, there's a couple pages where, like, Flash Hatton, I guess, that's what we call him, right? Yeah. Flash Hatton for Wally. Um, is there's an evil Flash there's Hat? an evil version there's yeah. a dark multiverse like, they do nothing, version they don't do they don't do anything to distinguish him from like you know regular Flash Hat and it's just he's there and like I was like wait a minute did Wally turn evil off page and I didn't notice or well he turns evil just not in this story <laughs> we'll talk about that later <laughs> no, we'll talk about that later <laughs> it was literally just the exact same thing <laughs> yeah but and like, like there's also one page where there's randomly a uh a Batman who laughs, like, King Batman who laughs from, like, the first issue, who is just randomly there. And, like, one of the- yeah, he, one like, of, cuts one of his Bruce's rob arm and, like- Yeah, he cuts off Bruce's arm, and, like, one of- like, some of the rob- the, some of his crows are attacking him, so I'm just like, wait, is this supposed to be a good one, or not, or, like, it was really confusing, because, like, why is he there? Why would there be another version of the Batman who laughs? I, I guess it's like they. I, I think in issue six they reanimated Bat Keck's corpse to fight for the here for the Justice League, but it was it was like a very toss away thing, and they didn't really expand on that. They're just like, okay, here we go. I must. I must. I, I must have. Thing. I must have missed that because I was so confused. And uh, and also was, was it also was wasn't a... his corpse like fucking obliterated? Like, I'm pretty sure, so. like, Wonder Woman, like, chainsawed into him, and his whole body exploded. 
Yeah, like, well, no, in issue two, they had the body just because the plot demanded, and I guess Capullo doesn't do good at drawing dissected corpses. I, yeah, I guess so. so. So they just ignored it. <laughs> oh, well. Um, the, the, don't, the don't best, question them. The best part for me, the best part for me, or at least until the end, and I'll get to the end in a bit, but the best part for me was when, was when the book got so edgy when bruce was like you thought i kept the black lantern ring on my hand and then he fucking <laughs> taps his chest with his with the stub of an arm and goes it was in me the whole time it was in me the whole time we're all oh and then they do a literal we're all batman meme oh, like God. you know like we're, we're we're the flash we're the flash and then you and then you've got like all the bat family like they're all like broken and like red arms Red Hood has his arm, like, it's just the bone. Yeah. Just hanging off like, of him. Like, Batgirl has, like, half her face, like, ripped or burned off. Yeah, and then, like, all the Robins are there, and Nightwing has his face, like, melted by acid, and then Alfred's corpse is literally dug up to continue fighting. <laughs> and then, I think Lex blows himself up with a black hole. Yeah, to, 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 to defeat Kill All. What a stupid fucking name. In this, that... Bra when Brainiac was like, in this universe, Kal El is called Kill All. I'm like, oh, oh god, that's just corny as hell. <laughs> <laughs> that is so fucking corny. Kill All. <sighs> and it's and kind I, of, it's I, kind I of. I think I visibly sighed. Like I was reading this in my room because, like you know, I, I was just getting up in the morning. I'm like, hey, you gotta read my comics. I pulled up that and I saw Kill All. And I thought to myself, death is becoming more and more of the sustainable alternative. My sanity <laughs> can't keep up with this bullshit. It, oh, it, it was just so corny. It's just so dumb. And, and then, like, when, um, I, I guess when, when the universe explodes, they do, um, they show, I, I hate this when they show, like, a classic version of the character and go, like, oh, this is, like, we're gonna combine everything, guys, and there, there are certain times when it actually works, like with, uh, in, not with DC Comics though, because DC constantly keeps resetting itself, so it has no meaning. Yeah. But like with uh, Immortal Hulk, where Ewing just went, "Fuck it, everything's canon now. I don't give a shit if people didn't like it or not." But it happened, and it works there. But not here because they constantly reset and it has no meaning. But then like. You know, the I think it's the pre-crisis version of Wonder Woman. Yeah, she or appears, they, but it's not her. Interprets herself. Yeah, it's it's not her. It's the, the hand. That's what they call themselves. The hand. The also, I I wonder how Wonder Woman literally pimp slaps. Uh, she she kicks a pimp slap into the Batman who kicks. <laughs> Just a lot of dumb things happened in this. And then she like they keep punching you for each other f forward and back in time. And it's like, okay, I, this would be a lot more clever if it was someone who actually was competent as, as a writer doing this. Yeah. But, but and no. then, <laughs> and then Wonder Woman, I guess, dies. Not really. Like it's like that kind of ascension death where like you don't you don't really die, but you reach another plane. And then we talked about this line earlier. And she she's like, you know what? Whatever I need to do, and I'll do it. And then, uh. Pre-crisis Wonder Woman goes, C then come, take my hand and let us greet the future and let truth be the metal that cuts our path, always. That's like the, clunk the clunkiest way of shoving the title of your book into the dialogue of your comic. It's like that uh, Family Guy clip where uh, Peter is in the theater and he and they hear the title just clunkily shoved and he goes, ah, ah, he said it, he said, said it, it, he said it. That's how I came across. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and then for whatever reason, the art team changes just out of nowhere. I don't think they even solicited that. I think it's Unique Paquette that does the art now, is doing the art for the rest of the book. Uh, I'll double check. Uh, but yeah, keep going. Yeah. No, wait, they did like five other people. Holy yeah, shit. Bri uh, Brian Hitch and Unique it's, it's Paquette, and Unique... Paquette and Brian it, Hitch. Yeah, they just decided... And also, that, that, la that last page looks a lot like Ultimates. I'm just putting that out there. It looks oh, it eerily does. similar to oh. an Ultimates page. Oof. I'm gonna look... I'll look that up. But... But yeah, like, Un Unique Paquette is like, you know, we're gonna celebrate, and then they have another dance... This is, I, I was joking earlier about 
how Scott Snyder recycled the ending for Death Metal into Dark Knight's Metal. I wasn't joking. This is exactly the same way the last event book ended with like the uh, the Justice League having a party. Yes, and like uh, <laughs> and and just like forming like something else. At the end of Metal, it was it, it was forming a new Justice League team, and and the, and, Hall, of it, Justice and the Hall of Justice. Theory. And this one, it's a uh, that we have the Hall of a Hall of Heroes and Villains or Hall of Justice and Villains. They're doing that Just again, like power. making, you're making like Le they're making Lex and several others like good guys, and just like yeah, this worked before, until you decided to change it's, it. It's, it's just to justify like Black Adam being on the Justice League. Yeah, that's the only reason they're doing this. But like, okay, so this is a really small nitpick, but in that in that splash in that double page spread where the Justice League is having the party, they put Superman on vocals and Black Canary on guitar. Are you that inept that you put them in the wrong place? Yeah, exactly. Why would you? Black yeah. Canary's entire Black Canary's entire backstory, at, at, at least since New Fifty Two, has been as a singer, and you put her on fucking bass. <laughs> are you de are you dumb? Also, also, DC is always trying to shove in Poison Ivy and Harley Quinn as heroes. Also, Bizarro is in the back. Just noticing Bizarro is in the background as well. Yeah, and there's no Artemis or Red Hood. So yeah. why is he just sitting there? What? <laughs> yeah, just like and the Green Lan the Green Lanterns are just like sitting there, like being a. Uh, the platform they're creating makers. platforms they're, for the dance party <laughs> they, they don't get to win they don't get to fucking dance they're just like let us enjoy this no we want to dance make platforms the halls of justice and doom that's what they're called oh is it yeah uh, oh because it looks like the symbol because, from uh you're yeah, the villain yeah, yeah it looks like this it's the combined symbol of uh justice and doom because... And for whatever reason, Wally's here, I guess. Yeah, Wally. They don't. Yeah, they decide, they decide to take Wally there. It's like Barry's like, "Hey, Wally, I got to show you something really important." It. And while and, and it makes like, it makes no sense. Banging on drums. Yeah, he's like, it's make it makes no sense. As it only exists to tell the reader, like, why would Barry want to show Wally this? And uh, okay, yes, yeah. And so got, Lex, got, Lex, okay, so Vandal Savage, probably, and that's probably Talia. all ghoul there. Who's yeah. the, I forgot who the guy in the cape is. That is that Vandal Savage? Is it? That's Vandal Savage. Okay. Oh, there. It, he even says in the dialogue. Yeah, Vandal I, Savage. Talia. This is, why you don't, this is why you don't give me books to read. Hey, um, what's up, Lord three three seven four? Yeah, everything is canon, so nothing is canon. That's the problem I have that's with. Sick and thank you for the follow. Greatly appreciate it. That's the problem hey, I problem. have with with death the the ending of death metal, is that they make everything canon. Everything every every type of history they had, they remember it, and it confuses. Even them. when like it does, even when it doesn't like Makes, corroborate with everything. Yeah, else. even when it doesn't corroborate with anything else, and the problem that DC has been having recently, is that they don't have a clear roadmap of what their fucking continuity is. And just throwing, so just throwing like this around in, from source to source. Yeah, throwing this in makes it even more confusing that they remember everything. Everything happened. Remember, d remember when Wally came back in DC Rebirth, and he remembered two different timelines, and it was fucking messing with him. Like he was actually. Yeah, and like that, and it, and as poorly implemented as it was in Titans, it was still a major source of his character arc that he remembered the Rebirth timeline and New Fifty Two. Yeah, like. And it was messing with him. Like, it was hurting him that he was remembering two different timelines. Because he's from a timeline that doesn't exist anymore. And I want to repeat this line that Lex Luthor says. The, f the fact is, it's all new. An infinite frontier. And then Wally goes, an infinite frontier. Man. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> That's like the most clunky way of introducing your new... Uh relaunch banner that i've ever seen like there there's that one bit in um marvel legacy when they said like this is our legacy and i'm like that was horrible imagine if like in 2016 that just captain marvel just said this is our all new all different marvel now 2.0 <laughs> <laughs> it's like that <laughs> or or um or just that uh, i men just says this is our fresh start oh they would i, I honestly think if they did like a one shot for that, and I'm surprised they didn't, 
because they did it for like every single they relaunch up until yeah. this one. Um, which honestly good for Marvel, but that was yeah. yeah. Guys, this is it's a infinite frontier. You get it? <laughs> I'm I'm just surprised they didn't go like, hey, look at this future state. Look at this future. Ex oh, oh god, that would have been so fucking. <laughs> that would have just been so much worse. Like, this is now the future state of our universe. <laughs> <laughs> oh good lord oh uh, now now oh. there's now there's two earths at the center of the universe or, or the multiverse earth it's earth, like in earth, it's like, earth in, it's zero. like in the end of it's like in the end of the first uh transformers idw universe when unicron uh exploded and created a black hole next to the sun that's what it reminds me of <laughs> just like there's a black hole next to the sun and nothing happened and of course conveniently the, the second earth is called elseworlds Guys, remember Elseworlds? The, the Elseworld. Yeah. Uh, and then it cuts to Sergeant Rock. It just randomly just cuts to Sergeant Rock with the with the well, JSA. Because, because he's been narrating the entire thing. I, I know that he's but... been narrating that entire thing, but that scene was like, okay. He's just there with and the then, JSA. Like, and, and like Hawkman's just there like, hey, is that my journal? Is that my journal? Is that my diary? And then, Don't read and, then, it. and then the Ultimates race off to action once again to <laughs> stop World War II. <laughs> Uh, let, and let's let's talk let's talk about that. Perpetua, who was supposed to be the big bad of oh, when everything, she fucking, he fucking jobs when the Batman who uh, Batman hat and who Kex fucking space jams a planet into her face and seals her behind the source wall. Wow, such a huge threat that an entire run of Justice League with s uh, several other mini or limited series set up this. And she just jobs. She jobs to bat kick. I I'm convinced that like y you know how w I, I don't I don't I've never taken cocaine so I wouldn't <laughs> know, but I'm assuming that when um, Scott Snyder snorted the cocaine that gave him the Batman hat and who kecks, that it's just like the one thing that lingered in the back of his head all along, and he just wanted to make it a story about Batman Hatton. <laughs> And that, and I gotta be honest, that storyline drove me fucking nuts. Like because they 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 shunted it over to Batman Superman and they did nothing with it. No, nah, he gets captured. He gets he captured, and that's it. And then it it spins yeah. it spins off into uh, Hell Arisen, which, which was the that, which was the true ending of of the Justice League run. Because <laughs> it, 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 it even spo no it even spoiled about. it. <laughs> It even spoiled the ending because it came out before the last two issues. Oh yeah, because yeah, it came out like the week before Justice League did. Yeah, and that was it, oh, literally in the first Lord. issue. Like Lex says, "You defeated the Justice League." I'm like, "Okay, what?" Oh yeah, we talked about that. I remember we, when we sat down, we talked about that with Corrupt. We were like, "Wait, that, that's it? They just lost?" That's, okay, they, they lost. Like it's not even out. Like, and that's just a problem with DC in general. They they. They don't properly, like, solicit stuff so it doesn't spoil another thing. Because they always, they always do that. It's just like, they, they, uh, they did it with, uh, they did it with, uh, back when they were actually supposed to properly do Generations. They released, all, they released all of that and it spoiled the, it spoils the ending of Flash Forward. But it shows, like, Oh, yeah, Molly because Flash Hatton was in the Free Comic Book Day issue. Yeah. It was supposed to be, yeah. Okay, so I guess I guess the concluding uh, statement for Death Metal was, uh, "It happened. We need more coke." <laughs> it happened. This was a this this was a book written by you know, first class writers and artists, uh, written for a third world country. <laughs> <laughs> it, I, I made that joke with the Tom and Jerry movie that this that the Tom and Jerry movie was written for was written and produced for third world countries to air to their citizens as propaganda. Yeah. I, that's what I think death metal was, just absolute nonsense printed onto cheap industrial paper and, you know, shipped out to, you know, uh Saudi not Saudi Arabia, uh shipped out to Afghanistan so that uh it could be used as propaganda against the West. <laughs> Hey, this what's, is what you what's up, this, is, this is what they this is what they produce. That's why I had to get rid of them. Hack, hack, uh, hack is asking, "What's DC? 
uh, how's DC going right now? They literally made everything canon, and it's more confusing than ever. Yeah. Like is that what you said, or is that what you're saying? Too? No, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Still trying there to make, still trying to make Batman the center of the multiverse. Yes. Now that there's two Earths, we're going to see another Batman on Elseworlds. That's so important. I mean, there was no point to try to make Death Metal a Wonder Woman story when only half of it was. That's nice. Well, what do you mean everything is canon? Okay, so at the end of uh, at the end of Death Metal, uh, Wonder Woman meets the the same the, the hand, the, the, hand or... well, well, the same species as a uh, Perpetua, and. They're like, hey, we were going to destroy your multiverse because it's messed up, y'all, but, like, you inspired us with your acts of heroism, yada, yada, yada. So we're going to fix things. We're going to change, change a few things. And so everything's back to normal. But the thing is, everything is canon. Every part of their past history, through different uh, reboots and all that, they remember all of it. That's what they said. They remember all all of their history. And they even did this did this beforehand. That was like their main tactic to fight like uh Batkeck and his army. He's like, let's undo the thread of like history so that everything exists. This this book, I'm gonna be honest, Death Metal as an event overall is like the most exhausting fucking thing I've ever read. Like King I, I've I've compared it to was it King and Black? I think we talked about it, or yeah. was it Absolute Carnage? It, I think it might have been. Might have been both, because King and Black isn't even. It's only been like two issues so far, main story wise. Yeah, like we we compared it like in tone to Absolute Carnage, and Absolute Carnage at least had like a had a tangible plot, as opposed to just like everybody running around letting the tie-ins do all the heavy lifting. Oh yeah, I was gonna I was gonna say that. I uh, I'll have to double check because I I haven't read Metal in a long time. And I know Metal had some tie-ins that were necessary to the plot, but I think Death Metal was much worse. That was stuff you had to read in order yeah, to understand the story. Like the majority, of the, the majority of the tie-ins were Gotham Resistance, and those were just kind of like you know things that you could read if you wanted to, but you didn't have to. Yeah. But this helped, one but you had to, to read, you had to read and everything. In this one you had to read tie-ins. Yeah, like there's there's entire plot points that are taking place in a completely different book that are necessary to understanding the main event book. It's it's even Empire did it better, where like you know M Empire leaned a bit too heavily on like the excessive number of tie-ins, but at least I could tell what the plot was in the main book, and it didn't yeah. rely on needing the tie-ins completely. Yeah, like the the end of issue number three of Death Metal has the Trinity stuck in the different crises. And then there was a a, tri a Trinity crisis one-shot you had to read. Oh yeah, I think which, it's on... Which should I think it, that's, it's in Comicology, right? The, the, the Trinity crisis one? Yeah, like... How, like, continuing off what happened there. Like, you had to read that. Because there would, there was just, there would have been just a huge gap of like story in between three and four that you're missing, and then even so, then, yeah. the, even then the 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 Superboy Prime stuff didn't even make it into the final issue. You just only see like one panel of him, and that's it. Yeah, and he just like you have to read the uh, what was it? Fuck, what was the tie-in? Secret Origins. Secret Origins to understand what's happening in this book. I think we've talked enough about uh, Scott Snyder's cocaine fueled pipe dream.